tell some more personal stories and let you know about how important this issue is to us veterans is uh, a very good friend and fellow veteran, Rick Hegdahl. Thanks, Robert. <laughs> Hello, fellow Washingtonians. I am the uh, local representative of Operation Free. I make my home in Bellevue, the poor side of Bellevue. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I live there. Uh, I spent 24 years serving the United States Navy in the uh, reserves. I spent three years on active duty in the early 80s and spent my, the majority of my time as a reservist in Puget Sound. In uh, 2001, after 9-11, I was recalled to active duty and served a year uh, protecting the uh, assets in Puget Sound before I was deployed to Kuwait for the beginning of what became uh, Operation Iraqi Freedom. Uh, one of the jobs I had, uh, one of the last jobs I had there was as a patrol boat coxswain, which is basically the representative of the commanding officer on the water. Basically, I was, I was the commanding officer of my small patrol boat. And uh, one of the missions that we had was uh, random anti-terrorism patrols around the oil tankers that were waiting to fill up at the two largest oil refineries in uh, Kuwait, which are some of the largest ones in the Middle East. And what we saw was, you know, dozens of oil tankers at night. You just see their lights on the horizon. They look like islands on the horizon. And uh, we patrol those looking for a possibility of small boat attacks. That was one of our missions. And what that showed me was how important those uh, oil tankers were to our economy and how the Navy's mission of keeping the sea lanes open, as, as Representative Sequest mentioned before, how important that is to our economy. And for us to be so dependent on a fuel source, a, you know, fossil fuels, an old technology that is, uh, it's a finite supply. And if, uh, if we're spending our treasury and our lives protecting sources of fuel, sources of energy for our country uh, that come from nations that aren't necessarily friendly to us. We put our nation at risk. We put our, our, our soldiers and sailors and Marines and airmen at risk. And what that tells me, too, is it puts my daughter's generation at risk and her children's generations at risk. To, re to move to renewable fuels in this country removes some of that risk. And for anyone to die for energy on its face is ridiculous. You know, no one should have to die just so we can keep our lights on. If we can rebuild our infrastructure, a smart grid, renewable forms of uh, power generation, wind and solar, we have the capability. We have the technology. We just need the political will. And it takes the citizens to stand up and tell the people that they elected to move to a more independent energy source for our future and for our children's future. Uh, I have some information here. The, uh, the Defense Department just released their quadrennial defense review, which is basically a forecast for the next four years of where our military is going. And in that uh, document, I have some quotes <coughs> that I'd like to share a few with you. And the first one says, Although they produce distinct types of challenges, climate change, energy security, and economic stability are inextricably linked. Another one. While climate change alone does not cause conflict, it may act as an accelerant of instability or conflict, placing a burden to respond on civilian institutions and militaries around the world. And when we say militaries around the world, who is the first military that shows up for the big disasters in the world. Haiti is the perfect example of that. Our, our ships and our military showed up to create some stability there. Now, that wasn't uh, a cause of climate change, but it just shows the, the, the kind of who reacts first to the big disasters. Another quote from the uh, QDR for the is the Environmental Security and Technology Certification Program uses military installations as a test bed to demonstrate and create a market for innovative energy efficiency 
and renewable energy technologies coming out of the private sector and Department of Defense and Department of Energy Laboratories. DOD must incorporate geostrategic and operational energy considerations into force planning, requirements development, and acquisition processes. To address these challenges, DOD will fully implement the statutory requirement for the energy efficiency, key performance parameter, and fully burdened cost of fuel set forth in the 2009 National Defense Authorization Act. So what the Department of Defense is saying is fuel to run our military is one of the most important things that they have in front of them and access to it. And if our naval installations and military installations here can rebuild their energy infrastructure, it makes our na nation more secure. And if we can get away from fossil fuels, at the very least, to keep our air clean. I mean, I love the environment that I have in this state. I wouldn't live anywhere else on Earth than here in Washington State, especially Western Washington. And I love the state, and I love the environment, and I want to keep the air clean for my family and for the generations that follow our families here in this state and keep this place beautiful. And we can rebuild jobs, we can have less pollution, and we can have stronger national security if we just convert to renewables and push for a strong energy policy that, that includes that. And uh, thank you all for being here. I want to thank my fellow veterans from Operation Free. I've had the pleasure of traveling around the country with and spreading this message to, in other states. And uh, I'd like to introduce uh, a couple of other my, my, my veteran friends. This is Matt Victoriano. He's a Marine Corps uh, veteran. Patrick Bellin, Army veteran. And you've met uh, Robin and uh, Senator Hobbs. So um, if uh, you guys like to say anything or take some questions, anybody have any questions? Certainly anybody can ask any questions. You said it all too well. Yeah. <laughs> well, we will be around for a little while yet, too. So if you want to come up and speak.